Alps to our alpine meadows, from the sprawling salt flats to the towering mountain peaks. It's hard to overstate the beauty of Utah's majestic landscapes. So much about being a Utah is our connection to and care for our land. These values have been ingrained in our culture since the pioneers found refuge here in 1847. We take great pride in the fact that folks from all over the country and all over the world traveled to our state to experience these rich and diverse landscapes. Utah has nearly the highest percentage of its land owned by the federal government, nearly two thirds of our 52 million acres. And of that federal land, more than 23 million acres is managed by the Bureau of Land Management. This land has been cared for and used by Utahns for generations. Recreationists and sportsmen who take advantage of the access to hike, hunt, mountain bike, ATV, and camp. The ranchers who graze their livestock to provide our food and fiber. The communities that rely on the oil and gas development in the basin or the coal mines. And power plants that provide more than 70% of our electricity individuals interested in exploring the cultural anthropology of our land and simply the residents that look to our open spaces for solitude. Utahns deserve and demand that our public lands be managed by someone they could trust. And it's quite obvious that the president's nominee for director of the Bureau of Land Management, Tracy Stone Manning, is not worthy of our trust. Ms. Stone Manning's history of aiding eco-terrorism is extremely troubling and alone should be disqualifying for the position to which she's been nominated. It'd be like nominating Bertie Madoff to serve as Treasury Secretary. For those who aren't familiar with tree spiking, an action with which Ms. Stone Manning has been associated, let me offer a brief, brief synopsis. Tree spiking involves hammering a metal or ceramic rod into a tree trunk. Loggers could be seriously harmed or even killed when they cut into the trunk of a tree that has been spiked. And the same goes for sawmill operators who are better, who are uh, processing the log in the mill. Eco terrorists who engage in tree spiking are willing to cause the gruesome injury or death of hardworking Americans who are simply trying to provide for their families. But it's not only her efforts assisting air eco terrorists that's of concern. Ms. Stone's Manning's blatant dishonesty about being investigated over a tree spiking incident to the Senate, that should disqualify her from serving as BLM director. I take my constitutional duty to provide advice and consent with regard to presidential nominees very seriously, as we do all do. And with limited exception, I believe presidents, regardless of party, should be able to put in place qualified individuals to lead their team. I've supported several of President Biden's nominees, even though I've disagreed with them on particular policy issues, because I believe they were basically qualified for the position to which they've been nominated. Simply put, however, Tracy Stone Manning's past involvement in eco-terrorism and her attempt to conceal that participation before the Senate make her unfit to serve as director of the Bureau of Land Management. I will be opposing her nomination and urge my Democratic friends, especially those who represent states with large amounts of federal land, to oppose her nomination as well.
Mr. President. The Senator from Utah is recognized. Mr. President, back in 1987, a 23-year-old mill worker named George Alexander struck a tree spike, a tree spike like this one in the log that he was processing. His saw blade shattered, and it, it caused a wound stretching uh, from his eye all the way down to his chin. His teeth were smashed, and his jaw was brutally gashed in half. The incident made national news. Just two years later, Tracy Stone Manning rented a typewriter to disguise her identity. She then typed and sent a letter to the U.S. Forest Service on behalf of an eco-terrorist group. She conspired to spike trees with spikes just like this one, of hundreds and hundreds of pounds of spikes just like this one. And in so doing, endangered the lives of foresters, of loggers, and of firefighters. She ended the letter with the following words, quote, you bastards go in there anyway, and a lot of people could get hurt. Unfortunately, it wasn't until after her nomination hearing that we learned of her work for the echo terrorist organization Earth First. It wasn't until after her hearing that we learned that she had been issued a target letter by a federal grand jury and had hired an attorney to negotiate an immunity deal prior to testifying in the tree spiking case. It wasn't until after her hearing that we read her words in a newspaper saying that she, quote, could have been charged with conspiracy were it not for her agreement with the U.S. attorney, close quote. It wasn't until after her hearing that we learned that she was compelled by that same federal grand jury to submit fingerprints, writing samples, and hair samples. Now, beyond her involvement with the echo terrorist group, since her hearing, we learned of public statements she made just months ago calling for homes to burn in forest fires. We learned of statements she made saying that grazing is destroying the West and calling for population control measures. And even labeling children as environmental hazards. After all of this, a White House official called her nomination a massive vetting failure. It was that, but it's so much worse than that. She was and is a radical. She supported a criminal conspiracy to engage in echo terrorism. Our committee asked her if she had ever been the subject of a criminal investigation. She, in a sworn statement, lied. Our committee never had the opportunity to ask her about these shameful acts. Her past actions, her positions, her statements, and her goals would each individually disqualify her for, from service. But combined, they make her a frankly offensive candidate to the countless people in Utah and throughout the West and beyond who rely on Bureau of Land Management cooperation for their livelihoods and for their way of life. Now, inexplicably, President Biden has not withdrawn this nomination, though Ms. Stone Manning has seemingly gone into hiding. She's left unanswered dozens of questions formally posed to her by me and by my colleagues. If confirmed, She'll lack the credibility with constituents throughout the nation that she would otherwise need to perform this job. She just won't have it. And any accomplishments made by the Biden administration to steward our lands will be overshadowed by her specter of deceit. The Bureau of Land Management controls 42% of the land in Utah. In fact, the BLM controls more land in Utah than Utahns do, a lot more. So I speak for a lot of people back home today, people who are insulted by President Biden's nomination of Tracy Stone Manning to run the Bureau of Land Management. Her confirmation would be bad for Utah, bad for the Bureau of Land Management, and bad for honesty and accountability in government. Needless to say, Mr. President, she will not receive my vote 
defies logic, reason, and the greatest traditions of this body to think that we would confirm her today. I urge my colleagues to reject this nomination.